Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're a regular to this channel, you know I love free tools, and that's exactly what we are looking at today. We're looking at a tool called TextGraph, and this is another procedural texture generator. You can think of it kind of like an extremely light version of Substance Designer. Uh, and you're basically creating uh, end textures using a node network of GLSL shaders. And if you want to actually jump in there and create your own GLSL shaders, it's actually quite simple. We'll show you how to do that in this video. Not how to create the shaders, but how you would import and use your own shaders. Now, first off, let's start with the program itself. This here is TextGraph. Now, I gotta say the warnings up front. There's two problems here. First off, this is not fully open source, but it is highly customizable. So that won't hurt 99% of users. Second is it's Windows only. I do believe it will run under Wine. Um, so Linux users should be fine. And frankly, with Mac OS, basically treating OpenGL like an orphan. I wouldn't expect too many tools to run on Mac in the future anyways, so probably not the biggest a deal, but if you're not on the Windows platform and you're not willing to run Wine, unfortunately, this is not the tool for you. All right, so let us take a look at what is going on here. Over here, you can see a preview of the shader that, or the, the graph node that we are creating here. Uh, this is a number of different maps, like an emissive map. Uh, a Albedo map, and I know I say that wrong, but I consistently say it wrong. Here we got a preview of the individual node we are working on. And here you basically bring all of these various different shaders together, Perlin noise, color mixing, multiplying, normal mapping, blurring, and so on, all work together to create these different channels that are output. I'll show you how to do this all from scratch. Again, you can see it, a preview over here. You've got ability to control the camera, so we can turn bloom on and off. Uh, we can modify the visibility of our environment map. So if we wanna make the environment, the HDR environment more visible, we can do so. We can also switch out that map. You'll see them here. Now keep this in mind, we'll show you this in action in just a second. So if you wanna have a different HDR map, you can easily do so. Uh, and that's where the environmental lighting is coming in. You've also got control over the saturation and so on of how it is rendered. Uh, the other thing you've got is the ability to define, uh, again, the different shapes. So you could have this gone on a sphere instead. You'll notice these are a bunch of just OBJ files. We'll look at that in just a moment as well. So if you're interested in checking out and running TextGraph, it is available over on itch.io. I will, of course, share the link in the linked article down below. So if you want to grab it yourself, don't worry too much about the URL. I'll give it to you later on. Um, you see, it, it's pretty straightforward. You can download it completely free. As all things with itch.io, you can also donate if you so wish. Um, it, it's also got a GitHub page. This is not the source code, but this is the publicly modifiable stuff. And as you're gonna see in a second, this is pretty much the majority of what people would play around with. So you're gonna see here, um, we've got uh, a shader section and a node section and a kernel section. These define the input, so I'll show you an example. We'll come back over here and let's go ahead and we'll. We'll go up to an empty part, I'll right click, and we'll create, um, say, a blend node. So you see here, this blend node has three pins, input A, input B, mask, and then an output pin. If we head back over here, oops, that's not what I meant to do, but that'll work. Head on over here, you'll go to nodes, you'll see blend, it's pretty well defined, it's just a JSON file that defines three input pins, like so, input A, input B, and mask, and one output bin. And then a combination of that, then you head on back over here, and here's the heart of it. It's just a GLSL shader, standard shader, so if you want to grab your own to modify from something like um, Shader Toy, you can do so. You'll see here is the blend GLSL shader. Just open that up. You see it's pretty straightforward. There are your inputs and your outputs that are defined. Um, and then here's the code for controlling it. So if you know how to write shaders, extending this guy is super simple. So then it is available in your local. So once you've downloaded and installed it, so I am right here. You'll notice that we've got some straightforward folders. First off, public is a mirror of the repositories we were just looking at. So if you wanted to find your own shader, you can just drop it in here. So there is the blend we were looking at and define the uh, nodes and the kernel. Right here, simple JSON files, ditto for the kernels, simple JSON file, just kind of defines the inputs, the pins, and how the shader works with other shaders. And that's all you need to do. You are up and up to the races. So customizing this thing is very simple. Now on top of that, right now we are looking at the install. You'll notice if you look in here, there's a mesh folder. So a bunch of OBJ files. So if you had your own object file, you wanted to uh, look at the materials on, the preview options, you could just drop it in here. And uh, it's another option available there. Same with the environment maps, go into textures, 
and environment maps. You can drop your own HDR map in here. So then when you head on back over to TextGraph, you'll notice the options are here. So your OBJ would be available there. You have to do a restart, but um, and ditto for cube map, it'll be available right there. So if you wanna customize this thing, it's easy to write your own shaders, it's easy to bring in your own preview meshes, and it's easy to bring on your own HDR maps. So most people are never going to actually need to get to the source code. Now let's make a really ugly shader to show you how things work. So we're gonna start from scratch, we'll go new, Graph, so creating a new graph, graph from scratch. Over here is your surface area, left click moves around. You can right click and create nodes that way, or you can go to graph and create a node this way. Another option you've got here is to set the resolution of the images you're working with. So if you wanna work in 4K, just right click, you're now in 4K. So now what we can do is come back here and we can go ahead and start off with things. A lot of things you'll start with, you, very often you start with a generator, things like a circle or a polygon or, um, Veroni, like so. So you bring in these various different things you start with. This one has multiple different options. So if you want to start with like cracks in a surface, you can do so. So if you want to turn these into your normal map, uh, you can create a normal map very easily starting with something like this. Or we can use a shape like this. And we can start actually stringing shapes together. So I can actually come in here, do another generator and create a polygon. Oops, wrong thing selected, like so. Actually, let's just do a square. We'll scale that up. You can double click, by the way, and just type in a value. So four by four. And we'll do the radius here. We'll make that guy bigger. And then what I could do is I could just come in here and we could do an operation such as a blend. Um, or actually do a multiply. Let's do a multiply. Operations, multiply. And we'll bring the one pin in and the other pin in. And then we have this kind of hybrid shape like so. Like if you were creating a screw head, this would work. So we could also bring in another little rectangle at the bottom and subtract it out and then have made a screw head as an example. And then let's say we want to take this guy and make a pattern out of it. We could drop that pin out, we'll go here. I do wish they follow the convention of drag out automatically creates the node menu. Uh, I've kind of just gotten so used to that in other programs. But now that we've got that out, we're gonna go here and do a transform and we'll tile this guy, for example. So we pop that guy out, we'll tile this in here, and we'll repeat this to be seven by seven. So, so we got a nice little grid of our guys going now. We probably wanna add a little color in here, so we just drop this guy in, and we'll do an operations, and we'll drop in a color mixer. Oops, no, I don't wanna mix, yes I do, yes I do. So what I wanna do then is we'll drop this pin out. So drop this guy out here like so, and then we've got the two colors, the background and the foreground color that we can play with. So for example, we can set the background like this, or we can keep the background white, and we can make the foreground, let's say, purplish. There you go. So we got our low, I told you I was gonna create something ugly. So let's say that is the result we wanted to work with. And then we can just basically take that guy. So what you do now, is this is the final node and you're happy with it, you just right click, set it as output, and you can pick the channel you want it to be. So in this case, let's make this, there are, and I always say this in a way people hate, but I'm consistent, our albedo map or our color map, and we'll just define that there. So now you see there it is in our preview. Once again, we can switch this guy out to different shapes if we want to see how it will look on other objects. Or we got a plane that we can work with like so. And let's go back to the rounded cube. All right. So there we've created our very straightforward channel. Now we can actually take this guy out and drop this into it. Oh, I really wish it handled that. Uh, so for example, we could go, um, all right, how am I going to get that? So no, I'm gonna wanna take it here. No, pre-color. Okay, so this is what I wanna do. I wanna drop that guy out, but I'm going to instead go and create a normal map. So that is under filters, normal. So boom, we pin this guy out. So you see, you can reuse a graph to some point. There is our normal map defined. And I could just go ahead and actually set that as our normal map. And there you see it instantly is um, it, it's raising the normals where we've defined on this map. We can change the amount of the effect up here. So let's change bump out to, all right. It does not like being in 4K texture mode. All right, so much more raised. There you go. So there we've created the elbow channel, the normal channel. Let's say we wanted to, we'll use this guy here. So we'll add some cracks in here. We'll use this as our height map. So there's our cracks. So I'm gonna come here and we're gonna do, uh, what do I need to do out of that? So let's put a small blur on it, like so. So we'll drop our cracks here into blur. 
So anything you select, you can see it previewed right there, and we'll mark that as our height map. So that is displacing it. Uh, we can also check the, okay, that's just gonna change the amount of the blur. Uh, or I could flip that. What is that going to do if I flip it? Here, let's flip it, find out. Um, so I can do here, and we'll do a operations one minus. So we'll pin that guy into there instead. So this will invert our colors, and then we'll drop that into our blur. There you go, so there is our height map. Yeah, it's not having a huge effect on it. But there's how you can easily create different shapes. You just basically start stringing these things together. You string the, the coloring together, the mixing of the colors. You bring in the various different shapes. Use a lot of noises. A lot of what you're going to do, you're going to start with various different things here. Um, your Veroni is going to be used quite often. Uh, Perlin noise is quite often used for various different things. Uh, like so. Again, I do not recommend switching out to the 4K textures because that's when things got really slow. So let me just finish that guy out. Should be able to change that up on the fly. So let's set our resolution to, hey, it's locked. All right, what are you doing? All right, I may have just ticked it off. Give it a second. I never actually had any performance issues until I jacked this up to uh, 4K textures, but now it's it's very unhappy with me. I don't think it's, yeah, let me just get rid of that. We'll continue it there. So basically that is how the program works. Uh, I would recommend staying out of 4K textures until you're actually ready for production. So author at you know 512 or 2K or 1K, and then when you're ready to switch it out, then come up here and change it down. Because you will find the performance is just so much better. So here, we'll bring back that guy. So that generator, that Perlin noise. So there you go. So that's why we saw all that slowness that we were dealing with there. Um, basically just because uh, I set it to the 4K textures. So that is kind of the idea here. You've got your various different options here. We got a gradient noise here, a linear gradient, uh, ray marching, like so. Uh, and you kind of just mix and match all these various different nodes together until you have a material you like. Now, nice thing is, instead of using the gibberish that I'm working from, you can come here into your install folder and you'll see there is a bunch of ones that they've done. So that first one I showed you was the volcanic. Uh, so if you wanted to create bricks, for example, there is a brick version right here, and it shows you the, the node process that went together. To create the node, the, the normal map and the color map, the ambient occlusion, the roughness map, and elbow map of this to create this end result. So if you want to jump in here and play around with things, you're probably just going to start want to start with the, uh, the examples folder. There's some neat results, and you can get them up and going very, very simply. Now, I do have a I have two small complaints. The last one is I'm going to show you how you export your results out of here, and it's not as obvious as it should be, and it's not it's not a good mechanism. And then I'm going to talk about my biggest complaint. So see, we got blur here to this normal map. I don't know how to disconnect this pin. So I'm hovered over it. It doesn't get, delete doesn't work. I can't drag it off. The only way I've found to disconnect an input pin is delete the node it connects to. It's not a huge deal, uh, but there should be a way, and it could be that there is a way. So I can actually highlight or hover over these pins like so, but I can't, I can't kill them or get rid of them. Or if there is a way to get rid of them, I have no idea what it is. You should be able to basically just drag it off or right click and get rid of it or something. But right now there doesn't seem to be any way to disconnect an outgoing pin short of deleting the, the node. The nice thing is there's full undo redo. So it's pretty easy to work with. You've also got the ability to copy and paste nodes. So I can grab, I could shift select these four nodes. Oh, sorry, control select them. Three nodes, control and paste. And then boom, you've got that node replicated. There's nothing actually feeding into it. so. It would be nice that it actually hooked up to something. But there is easy copy and paste between nodes. I just, again, I wish there was this easy way to disconnect nodes. Uh, maybe the author can tell me how that works, but that's the only real big flaw I've seen so far. And then the way you export. And the way you export, you would think you'd just come up here and go file, say save as or export or something, but this is just save as their own native format. So that's not what you want to do. Um, and there's nothing else in the menus up here. There, there's no way to export this out. So if you want to export your nodes out as textures, and which is ultimately what you're going to do. So if you want to save your normal map um, or your height map or something like that, in order to do so, so if I want to get my color map out of here, what I have to do is come to the one I've defined as a color, you right click it and do export texture. So if I want to export this guy out, I could export as a ping, pick the location for it. So here is it like so, and that will be, in my examples folder, which makes no sense, but you'll see it would have exported out 
right here. And even more annoyingly, it didn't give the file extension. So be sure to give your file extension. Uh, but that is how you get your maps out. So there we see, export out. So what you have to do is basically go to each output node and export it as a texture. This is kludgy. There should be an export all at once or all defined that goes through and finds the, you know, the height, the normal, anything tagged or attributed as an output and then exports it for you. Uh, but this unfortunately is the process. But those are two very small complaints. I wish the export was better and I wish I could disconnect pins. And hopefully the owner or the, the, the creator uh, actually goes ahead in the next update and maybe addresses those things. Uh, but all the same, it's a free tool. It's quite capable, quite powerful, and can actually do some really cool results. And those are things you can get around, uh, but workflow optimization wise, those would be two things I would love to see. Now I did mention earlier on, I covered another tool that is very similar to this and that was Material Maker. I'll link this video down below. This is kind of the same-ish thing, the same kind of approach. Um, probably in some ways less powerful, in some ways more powerful. It's just kind of a different approach, but definitely nicer previews throughout. But this one is built on top of the Godot engine, which uh, has the advantages of more platform support. Uh, but they're both excellent tools, uh, kind of taking a slightly different approach to the same ultimate result. So if this one doesn't work for you, be sure to check out Material Maker. And if you checked out Material Maker and you liked it, check out TextGraph. They're both really cool tools. Um, and that's it. So I gave you something to play around with on this weekend. And I hope at least... Uh, say four or five of you found it interesting. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think in terms of tools in this segment. I know there's a couple of other ones. If there's something else you want me to cover in terms of procedural texture generation, let me know and I will take a look at it. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.